Hey everybody, I'm Melissa Joyner and today we're at the Boathouse in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. In this series we'll be plugging you into the music scene along the Grand Strand. Today we're joined by J.P. Taylor as he plays one of his original songs for us. Make sure you stick around because we're going to learn about all things J.P. Taylor. This song is called You'll Never Know. for coming out to play your song for us. Thanks for having me. Man, I never know what to expect when I come to one of your shows. You play so many different instruments and you have such an amazing personality. It's always, it's a guessing game and I love that about you. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. How many instruments do you actually play? I, I dabble in a lot of different instruments, but I play piano, guitar, trumpet, flute. Those are the main four. Definitely right there. For those of you who don't know JP, when he says dabble, he means <laughs> I can play circles around most people. No. He's very modest. <laughs> Can you tell us about the song that you played today? Like what inspired it? Who did you write it with? Just tell me a little bit about it. So this song in particular was very much inspired by the guitar riff that was that you heard at the beginning. I wrote that just um, just as like a idea like three or four years, actually like five or six years ago, really. Right. It's been that long. And then it's only been until recently that uh, my good friends Will Ness and Connor Mills, we've been doing a lot of stuff under the banner of Burnt Sienna. And we've been getting together every week, every Wednesday. and you know, sort of having like a writer's session. Mm -hmm. And um, they encouraged me to write words for that song. So I wrote about 85% of the words to that song. Okay. And then brought that to those guys, and then we sort of finished the rest, but. I love the melody. It was yeah, so, such a hook. Like after you finished playing it, I was still singing it. So that's how you know thank a song's you. really good, yeah. Well, that's what a good song is. It's all about perspective, right? Because yeah. one person can listen to it and be like, oh, this song is made for me. And then another person listens to it and it helps them heal from something. Exactly, yeah. 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 I, I like to leave it that way. I don't want it to be too, specific or meaning. I think this one does have a bit more of a specific meaning when you really break it down, but I just like the way it, it makes you feel when you hear it more. Mm. That's sort of why my approach to songwriting has always been personally. 
Oh, I love that. And so that makes me want to ask this next question of what influences you as a songwriter or a performer? Because I mentioned earlier that you never really know what you're going to get. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, like, what is the amalgamation of influences that makes up you as an artist? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would not consider myself a songwriter foremost. That's just okay. sort of something that I have to, I, I've always dabbled in. I say dabble, but I mean, it's never been like my main focus. I've always been more of like a especially when I was in college, like playing in a big band or playing in a concert band, playing trumpet, playing flute. Or like when I was with Oracle Blue, um, just as a part of a rhythm section, playing piano, um, adding like textures with the flute, trumpet and stuff like that. So I've always seen myself as part of a band, as part of like a musical project. Mm -hmm. So it's only been the past year, past year or so since quarantine that I really like dug deep and sort of like got back in touch with that songwriter inside of me and sort of yeah. bringing back old ideas, like the guitar part there. And, oh man, yeah. that makes it even more special that so, you yeah. came and played for us. And yeah. This year is the only year I've really been doing solo gigs the way I'm doing now. So really I'm trying to do the, more of that, you know, so huh. just stepping out of my comfort zone and pushing myself to do more and more each time I play out is uh, awesome. important to me. Man, that's so cool. Then this makes this next question even better suited for you. You've been in this music scene for a while in different bands and different projects. You mm -hmm. listed some of them earlier. Yeah. How is it different now as a soloist? Like, what does this music scene mean to you? And have you seen it change over the years? I love where the scene has gone uh, since I came back here from, I went to UNC Greensboro for four years when I graduated from Sac City High School. Okay. And I came back here and um, I saw some people that I knew from before. But I, I was mostly a blank slate. I didn't really know a lot of people. I met a lot of the guys from Paperwork, like Connor, mm -hmm. Dan Simons, Chris Keys, all those guys. And uh, they've been really good friends with me for the past four or five, six years since I've been back from school. Mm -hmm. And like, I've seen the community grow so much closer and closer and tightly knit. And um, it seems to me moving away from like, we're competing with each other. It's so, like, we're thriving and we're helping each other build mm -hmm. up. Like, like this right here is amazing that you're doing this, you know? Oh, thank you. This is great. So this is a, a definitely a telltale sign of where the community is going. Oh, I love that. That means a lot. We actually talked to one of our other musicians about how music is a community, and I love that you're just diving into that a little bit deeper. It is the brighter you shine, the brighter everyone else around around you shines. Yeah, yeah. And I am witnessing that firsthand here in Myrtle Beach. You know, we got stranded here, as you know, and now we have mm -hmm. friends that have become family. And so I just, I love that about this scene here. Yeah, some sure. people will say things about Myrtle Beach, but I love it here and I love the people who are here and my family's here and my friends are here, my best friends are here. Yeah, and you're uh, here. Everybody's here. I love it, man. Thank you for the that. The community's really growing a lot there, and I'm really proud to call myself a member of the community. And I just love to see other people thrive and shine, do their best. Yeah. You know? Do you have any advice for anyone who wanted to move here tomorrow, or leave it open to any musician who is just starting out in music? What would you say? Man, just keep doing what you're doing, even if you're not seeing the fruits of it right away. And uh, you know, there's gonna be points in your life where it won't be that that thing for you that's making money or is like the main source of your income but it's still super important to make sure that you keep that part of your life because I've, I've let it slide to the wayside before and then I've always regretted it later yeah. you know and I'm always happy to come back to it it's always there like a like a bike you know it's always yeah. ready to be ridden but I would definitely say just don't give up on your dreams and keep doing what you're doing and you know just if, you, if what you're doing feels right to you just keep doing it and like, write the music you want to hear do the things you want to do and be the people that you want to see around you. If you could play anywhere in the world, where would you play? Like, what is your dream venue? And if you want to take it one step further, you can add anyone to that stage with you. Anywhere in the world with anyone? Yeah, oh, man. absolutely. I would dream say, list. Right now, like, I would take my friends in the family function band and like some of my close friends here, like Will Ness, mm -hmm. make a super group, just fuses all of our ideas into one mm -hmm. awesome coalesced idea, whatever that looks like. Where would you go with that? Man. I want to say somewhere cool, like far away, but I mean, honestly, doing something like that right here would be great. But like, if I had to pick somewhere, I would say like somewhere like Japan, I think, because like that seems, more, from what I've gathered, is like where a lot of the cool, like crazy stuff's happening, and like yeah. there's like a really good receptive audience there for that, and there's a receptive audience anywhere you go looking for it, you know. Yeah, you make your own but audience for I sure. I love Japan. I love sushi. How did you get into music in the first place? Is it in your family? And I like to ask, when did music choose you? Because I know yeah. you did not have a choice in that. <laughs> well. I think the biggest influence was definitely my father. He did full-time radio from, I think when he said something like, when he was a teenager, like 14 or 15. Oh, cool. He was in the radio station where he lived in West Virginia. And he did that full-time uh, up until I was born, I'm pretty sure. Oh, so cool. listening back um, to his old radio stuff is awesome. But whenever I was a kid, he like definitely influenced me a lot listening to the stuff he listened to. And he had a really diverse uh, variety of music that he exposed me to at a young age. 
And I think that was the biggest influence for me. Um, and also, I don't know if it means anything, but my grandfather, who I never met, he, his, his name is Joseph Taylor. And he really wanted to learn how to play organ and piano, but he never could, so he was always Aww. frustrated. So I feel like it was just an honor to like, take that name and like go Do further it. with it and learn. You yeah. know, maybe that's just more like a metaphysical thing, but no. uh, you know, other than that, I just slowly will learn to love music more and more. There are different phases through my life where music meant different things to me. I love, can you just say that again? Because that is so important. Music means different things at different yeah. places of your life. Like the first phase I can think of is like my pop phase. Like I love to consume music like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. Yeah. So just All right, like, hold on. Team NSYNC or Team Backstreet Boys? I need to know. Yeah, NSYNC first, first and foremost. So thank God. Yeah. Thank God. That's but important. I, like I remember having that on my Walkman and just like, that was just the vibe. And, you know, there was no reason for listening to it. It was just good. I just liked it, you know? I honestly didn't know we could get any closer until you just said NSYNC. I was like yes. holding my breath there. Doing one of these. <laughs> well, yes. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I feel like I could talk to you forever. I won't do that, but I will close it with this. It's no secret that this year has been ridiculous and last year even more so. And especially doing what we do for a living, sometimes it's really hard to go out there and play. How have you managed with that? Like where have you found inspiration, whether it's in music, people, like what's kept you going? Definitely people, definitely people has been a huge inspiration. Um, People have helped me love myself even deeper than I thought I could last yeah. the past years. You know, went through some dark times. I would say personally, I'm sure we all have been through those times. Mine was perfectly aligned with the quarantine. And <laughs> yeah, it just worked perfectly. But then I found a lot of inspiration in my good friends like Tina, and you know Tina. And she Tina was actually was yeah, she was on our show. Yeah. Oh, she was. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. I love Tina. She's been a huge inspiration to me. Just someone just radiates love and you know unconditionally, no matter what you do, who you are, you know, she's going to give you love. And that's what I strive to be that way, you know. Well, guys, I feel like there's no better way to close it out. He talked about love, and today we've talked about community, and that is what you get here in the Grand Strand, specifically in Myrtle Beach. And as you are now seeing, this is community, and we're so glad that you're a part of it. And so if you want to join on, click that like button, that follow button, share it with your friends, be a part of our community. Two in the morning can't sleep tonight I got a feeling something don't feel right we lost the magic a long long time ago something so tragic now you'll never know you'll never know you never know how much I love you when we first begin you'll never know each time I try to reach out to you Even with what you put me through